Hi, it's Empress Rose and welcome to our collected reading. I do have my scrying ball out today and it just was getting little glimpses of things. It was like a fancy dog in Paris. There was a dancer with big, oh, maybe there was a Las Vegas vibe here, but there was a dance with a big headdress and a glimpse of a bear in the distance. Um, was there a goat? Maybe there was a goat. Everything had like a lot of big personality. Even even the bear in the distance was it had a very expressive face. So there's a lot of expressiveness and almost over the top ridiculousness. So just some glimpses of that. All right. Whoa. All right. That was exciting. Just like everything in the in the scrying balls. Exciting, expressive. Birthing a new age, birthing new creations, dreaming a world, uh, dreaming a new world into being. Okay, we have new featured three times here. Um, the, there's ripple effects to whatever you're doing, and there's a very concrete um, aspect to this. There's a very like. This is in reality. This isn't just, I'm thinking about, not just, but you know, I'm dreaming about a new thing. I'm planning a new thing. This is a reality. Um, it feels very concrete, very as above, so below, very magician vibes here. Um, and so the birthing uh, to me is, is, you know, it's after the incubation period, after the, um, the gestation period. There's something very uh, 3D about birthing something, right? And then we even have like some sort of dilation process here uh, that this thing is in the, maybe some growing pains or some, it's going to be a stretch to get this thing <laughs> into reality is what I'm seeing. So, and then we have leap. You go first, the universe will catch you. So, wow. So a leap of faith here just with the, um, creating something new. Oh, but there's not, there's a lot of unknowns to it. And you're leaving some sort of, you might even be leaving a past self behind. There's a risk to this birthing of a new age. It could be even a new era of your life. And the cards seem to like have this one little bit. I don't think I'm going to be able to show it on screen, but it's this one little bit where they are feel very connected here. Um, like again, there's like a lot of like hardness that were sort of overcoming, transcending some difficulty, some sharpness. And a sense of leaving some old self behind. Much like you would like your old home or your, you know, if we're birthing something, we're leaving the uterus behind, the universe as we know it behind. So moving forward, but there is, there is a bit of a sense of risk here, a sense of fear may be present with this birthing. Of course, a birthing process is, has so much potential um, for everything to go right and wrong. And so I think that the, it's normal to have some fear in the process. But you are taking a leap of faith. It's not completely unknown. There's been some sort of energetic work done before we do a concrete leap but there is a there's a good solid base from which you are leaving and it does look like you're not able to necessarily see where this is going so the the clearest thing in view is probably the past but there may be a moment or something where your intuition just leads you to to leave that behind so And you go first. There's a, there could be like even a twin vibe here. And you're 
the first twin being born or you're the first one out of the gate here. It's definitely a you go first feeling. I mean, feel, it just says you go first. So I don't know. It's almost like there's, there's two things being born here and you're the first one to be born or you're the first one. You're making the breakthrough here. Very strong breakthrough energy. All right. Oh, interesting. Mermaid's love. I was not expecting this, but this is like the lover's card. And it, I don't know if the artist took this from Fiddler on the Roof, but a bird may love a fish, but where will they live? So it's just impossible difficulties. Like life is really good at putting us in sort of impossible situations, impossible choices where we have to, you know, when push comes to shove, when the rubber meets the road, we're, we've got to really decide and define who we are through this decision. Are we someone who does this or are we someone who does that? And you may have a lot of stereotypes about who, what it looks like if someone does that, or, you know, am I someone who does this? This is interesting. It's like a, it's like, am I someone who does this? Well, what's your stereotype of someone that does that? I have a tattoo on my back and um, I got it on a whim. It was in Juneau. It was in January and I was too young to go into any bars. So the only place open was a tattoo parlor. And, um, and I was cold cause there was like feet of snow on the ground. And so I split a tattoo with my friend and, um, we bought one tattoo and we both got, and it's not what I ever wanted or envisioned. I wanted something much cooler. It's the moon. It's a crescent moon. And, but I wanted, I had envisioned, and this was back in the nineties. So this is important to the story. So anyway. The point of this story is um, I had a 10 hour boat ride back to my home, which was on an island up there. And I cried almost the entire time because who was I? What was I? Um, how did how did this happen? Who am I? And um, and it just really rocked me like I'm not a tattoo type person, but this was back when people just sailors had tattoos and motorcycle gang people had tattoos. So, um, but I really had to work through that and just be like, well, maybe who people who have tattoos are not who I thought, or maybe we can change this narrative or, you know, I made a bunch of assumptions about who, what type of person does this. So, um, you know, I did it on this whim and sort of in this distress and, uh, and then later was like, I'm not the type of person, but I am the type of person. So then I had to reevaluate like, well, what type, well, maybe I need to reevaluate what type of person gets a tattoo. Uh, so anyway, mermaids, <laughs> long story, um, uh, it's actually could be way longer. There's a lot more there, but I, I did shorten it. Believe me. Um, so mermaids love is reminding me of that, of like, who would I be if I did this? And there's like a root of who would I be if I did this? Well, um, adventuresome, um, you know, there, there's, there's like what our initial thought of who would I be if I did this? Well, oh, I'd be like, a well, now I have to join a bike gang, I, a bicycle, no, not bicycle, motorbike gang. Now I have to join a, a, a biker gang, you know, because I have this tattoo or, but maybe we shift like who would do this, who would, um, what sort of person, maybe you have some stereotypes because that's coming in really clearly that there's like, who would I be with this? And then there's also like, who, who would I be if I did this? Who would I, who would I think would do this versus who would I actually be? There's a difference between being in some sort of like surface level judgment. Um, so that whole story is meant to like illustrate what I'm trying to get to is like this, um, choice and decision point and who you stereotyped other people who make that decision to be and what it actually means when you come to the decision point and what it means for you at a deep soul level is very different than sort of some sort of assumption you've made about people that make choices like that. So that is coming in very clearly here, which is a little unusual, but it's a decision and it's a choice and it's meant to have you make it very authentically from where you're at today without looking at sort of some sort of story you have in your head about what it means 
which isn't authentic, which is just some sort of inherited story that's been passed down about what it means to do something or make a choice. So mermaids love difficult choice, difficult decisions. And this is asking you to make it very authentically and not about what other people are going to say or what you would have said about yourself if you had, if you were observing. Outside observers have no say here. So mermaids love. And then treasured memories. This is about well, treasured memories, the past, something beautiful. You haven't let go of something. There's a very beautiful memory, which is so interesting because these other three cards have very strong future focus vibes. Mm. But remember this card right here? And she's looking back because that's the thing she can see. It's the past. The future is so unknown that it's sometimes much easier to look back. Not that we shouldn't, but you are looking back. It's like you're taking this leap of faith and it's bringing up a really pleasant memory. Or maybe as you take a leap of faith, you need to remember all the other leaps of faith you took. Like this tattoo, it's, it's not the thing I wanted, but it also is this really interesting memory. And I love it. And I forget it's there all the time. And I love it and it, it just is a reminder of all sorts of ways that I have made decisions in the past and not necessarily, you know, getting what I truly wanted because of making decisions out of duress or under duress. Um, but this is a treasured memory. So there is something about some kind of memory. I just shared with you guys this treasured memory, which this brought up. And how is it treasured? It's somewhat um difficult it was a you know I cried for 10 hours oh what a treasured memory <laughs> um but there is something about that like making a choice and like you the memory will stay with you forever or until you get dementia or have a traumatic brain injury if either one of those are in your future but um <sighs> Yeah, and then the Mermaid's Love also talks about an intellectual approach and a more emotional approach to something. One person really thinking through a lot of things. Um, another person, oh, this is so, another, one person thinking things through um, or one aspect to approach this choice point is to think things through very logically, have a schedule, have a plan. Another aspect is very emotional and I'm just seeing how neither one of these have legs on the ground. Neither one of them is like looking at the present moment. They're all looking back at this, well, at this treasured moment. They're all looking to some sort of past thing, but this whole thing has this like birthing new, new, new. We just saw new three times here. And now we're just seeing, I'm seeing past three times in three different cards is that, yeah, there's a leap, but there's something so enchanting about the past. Maybe the history of how we got here, of how we got to this leap, of how we got to this choice point. Um, but again, there, there's a sense of looking back, the emotions the mind may be very logical in this process of moving forward. Time is linear. Time goes forward. Time is very logical. And then here, if, if we're going to meet this and we have to do this and this and this and this and this, um, and we have a whole schedule, a calendar, but then there's this other really emotional aspect. That's like back here is looking at where we leapt off of. Maybe there's some kind of like historic anniversary in your life coming up right now. Um, but there's this leap of faith, but it's, it's on such a good solid foundation, but in the ungroundedness that occurs during the leap before we land, it's almost like the process, the being born process before we're born after we start the process there's this this ungrounded moment and maybe in that moment we're looking at the past and we're holding on to something from our past some truth something we know perhaps about ourselves 
but this emotion the emotion has this ungroundedness there's just so much duality here too like we have this echoed in this we have these ideas and then we have this reality again there's like this yin yang aspect going on here which is really interesting too because that I picked the Guardians of the Night Tarot deck and it's been really calling to me lately, which is so interesting because to me, uh, because we're in uh, summer solstice. It was it was two days ago and so we're in this like bright, bright, bright period. Um, and then there's Guardians of the Night, which is this dream time, dreamland, darkness, um, the night. So. It just seems like some aspect there and the, 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 this it's so potent for me right now. There's some aspect from the past, which is so important. So we can be so future focused, but the, but it's really important that we sort of guard this dream or this darkness and pull it with us. I'm thinking of the dot in the, you know, each of the paisleys that make up the um, Taiji or um the yin yang symbol, each of those paisleys that match together. And then there's that little eye in there. And so there's something about like treasuring the darkness and the light or, okay, well, let's move on to the tarot here. From the bottom of the deck, underlying um, base, basic energy at the bottom, seven of swords. Oh. Sneaky behavior, clever, the smart intellectual thing to do, the smart thing to do, not the done thing, not the thing that we do. It's reminding me of the little story about the tattoo, actually. Not the thing that we do, not the expected thing, but the smart thing, the clever thing, the, um, the, the, th I'm seeing, I'm seeing this this video I saw the other day of like the, this, the speed skaters and one of them like does this whole lap and then rides the, the, um, behind, but he's actually lapped everybody, but he only looks like he's behind. He's actually like way ahead by an entire lap. And then now he's, he's riding sort of the, I don't know, the jet stream, the, the stream that the other, skaters are creating so there's like a cleverness to it um it's not the done thing like the done thing would be to like just go in the pack around the the rink and then but the the cleverness um is not the done thing it's it's more clever than that so usually we see like a battle situation and then someone's just stealing the other team's swords it's like well that can be clever actually so there's some sort of like background work sometimes this is about sneaky behavior um secret being secretive about something being clever about something there's like the way to go do things which is like go asking your boss for a raise if you want more money ask your boss for a raise that's how, what we do but then there's this other thing where you can go get another job and negotiate a higher salary based on your past experience and all that there's i mean that's also done but you know there's like this direct route and then there's this uh, clever roundabout way to get what you want um and this is uh, this could also be intellectual property as far as like someone um, sitting on ideas, holding on to ideas and concepts. Well, everybody over here is duking it out over, um, you know, the, the known concepts and the known ideas and discussing those. There's somebody, possibly you, with a secret plan, with a secret um, ideas that just aren't sharing. And, and it's greater than what's being uh, argued about over here. This is actually way cooler. So you could be in the process of birthing something that you maybe have been a little bit secretive about. Past, present, inner landscape, what's at issue, environment, to-do list, possible outcome. Just want to point out that Jack is not on the table, thank goodness, but he is right here in this little this giant black cat here. It's a couple cats. In the recent past, we have five of pentacles, <laughs> feeling poor, feeling broke, feeling left out in the cold, vulnerable, feeling very vulnerable. 
um, not able to access uh, the goods, the goodies, and they're being, they're hidden from you. A sense of loss. Oh, in the past, in the past, um, too, there's a sense of loss, there's a sense of what you were ex at some point what you were expecting didn't go according to plan and in fact you you came to a place that didn't have what you needed you thought it would have what you needed you thought this would be just perfect um but it didn't have what you needed and if it did have what you needed it were it was kept from you there were like doors closed Close, but not quite. <laughs> um, I mean, it was like there was there were new things there, but they weren't for you. And this may have had, and this may have been very disappointing and very frustrating. And it has you thinking about leaving, or it did have you thinking about leaving a situation because it just wasn't giving you what you needed and it, <laughs> like there's something about anarchy like is this anarchy it which i'm a big fan of because we all come from chaos i mean i don't think we're ready for it as a political idea although it's a nice ideal so maybe that's a little bit of it is the ideal the concept of the ideal, the reality did not live up to what you were thinking it was going to be. So a little bit of what we were already talking about this card of um, the story and the expectations versus the reality of something. Um, and it, it maybe, you know, it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't, didn't have what you needed. It wasn't quite enough. In your current situation, we have the sun card. You see that very clearly now. This is obvious now. There's, um, yeah, it's typically considered the happiest card of the deck. Like why you would go from this sort of depressed, lacking energy to the happiest card of the deck. Um, how we get there, apparently we know personally. But, but I also don't see this. This is just as the happiest card in this deck. I see it as clarity, as fog lifting. Like maybe there was, I, I have such a sense of confusion from this owl here of like, here I have come to the tree, the big tree, which should have a lot of great uh, habitat, that, which should be a habitat for a lot of different things. And I should, but now the tree is cut down. Here are all these like um, cocoons, but I can't access them. What I can access is hidden from me. Um, and I just feel a lot of confusion from this owl. It's just like, I came to the place, but the place is not placing. And then we have the sun. So now you're seeing that. You're seeing that this isn't the, this, this place can't place for you. It's not the place it once was. And maybe you, you know, it's like a cafe that was so good and so amazing. Um, and then you're so excited to go back to the cafe and you get back there and like everything's different. Um, they redecorated everything or the cafe burnt down. That happened for me. And the cafe burnt down in the meantime and, um, or like it's changed owners. The decor is totally different. It went from, you know, nice little, um, singer songwriter wood, wood floor cafe to, you know, bright checkered floor cafe with, um, turquoise, decor and like it just is totally different and so this could have you with the cards on the table have you remembering this like oh the old cafe and how things were so like this owl was like thinking about this tree and how things were um but now it's a little confused but now you see you see that this is not what it once was this is not what you thought it was it does not have what you thought it was going to have in it um and there's there's clarity there uh it just sort of it just seems like this 
deadpan like yeah this is this is what it is i see it now yes we had a moment of confusion upon a return like where where is this i thought this was this and it's not and so now we now we are seeing this very clearly um so nine of pentacles so you know this is something you already know you've already figured it out and we're just talking about like a moment of confusion of like what is this and now you're like yeah this is this is what it is um your hopes your fears your inner landscape nine of pentacles resting on your laurels despite things not having been what you think they sh what you remember them as being or how you remember it um you're still hoping for success here um material success financial success um i think there's some disappointing truths you've had to come to terms with uh, but it hasn't dampened your hope for uh achieving something and hitting at least some kind of plateau some kind of um place a good resting place like you know you're on a long journey and and you're you still want the good resting place like it's like you've accepted that the cafe that you meant to go to and bring your family to and your friends to that you discovered last time you were in this little town <laughs> and um and but you still like are like yeah i still would like to enjoy a cafe maybe not this one maybe this one maybe not this one but i still want to like sit down like it took us a while to get to this place um and i would like to to rest and hopefully i can afford what they're serving now even though everything seems upgraded like there's um or downgraded in your eyes um so there's still like this desire to be successful in this endeavor even though there have been disappointments so far what's at issue here is the tower reverse oh oh just look in the head <clears throat> there's a lot of disappointments here oh my goodness yes oh wow okay this is a very disappointing situation. Huh. The whole beginning cards were so like hopeful. So maybe this is talking like there's secret knowledge and secret information that is out there. And maybe you have it or maybe somebody else has it with the seven of swords. There are a lot of pentacles here, so this could be work related which is what i've been envisioning but the tower card <clears throat> in the reverse could either be um a prolonged inappropriate situation and inappropriate that sounds really intense but a prolonged situation uh so i can see the tower in two ways ha a pro but here it is it's people staying someplace longer than they should. It could be leadership that is not able to move on. Um, or, you know, it's like if somebody's been um, voted out or fired, but they don't leave and like they're they're still they're, they shouldn't be here this isn't this isn't their place anymore and they're being asked to move on or go someplace else um, but they're not able to this could also be like not a crisis like something oh man um so something a bunch of different possibilities uh and with these general readings as in a little more common the personal readings usually just have one or two situ possible situations that come through but the these generals do have a lot of possibility to them because there's so many storylines that come through here so what's interesting though is this five of pentacles with this um stump here and then we have the tower with the stump but what i'm seeing is that the stump did not was not cut down all at once so whatever disappointment was sort of a bit by bit disappointment possibly um where it didn't all happen at once it wasn't a big crisis it was sort of a 
drip, drip, drip disappointment or a, a little piece at a time disappointment. So multiple small disappointments. The other thing just um, intellectually with the tower card of just the, you know, if we're treating it like a flash card more, it's just um, things coming together very quickly, which I'm not sure I'm seeing that in any of these other cards. But the tower reverse can be things coming together very quickly. Like I want to see it because it feels hopeful. Maybe there is a way. Like you're still very hopeful so um, about something. But the tower in reverse could be, you know, something falling apart piece by piece. Something that needs to sort of be dismantled but isn't yet dismantled. Um, and then or or rapid healing a rapid suturing up of something it's so it's interesting because the crises always come in like so dra dramatic and instantaneous and yet the healing process from sort of from these these instantaneous one second blink of an eye changes of our lives it can be a little catastrophic from time to time hopefully not too often um, and then the healing process is this long, lots of work, lots of work, lots of work. I always wondered about that. Like, why have the crises always come in so, like, strong and sudden? And then the healing, why can't the healing be strong and sudden? But this does look like it's possibly, like, a, a slow um, crisis that's been gaining a step-by-step -step crisis um it it doesn't look like it's something that just all of a sudden happened um it looks like it's something that kind of emerged over time so then maybe the healing process can be like shoof wave my magic wand and it's all healed so um Five of Cups, speaking of the healing process, in the environment, there's something very disappointing that has happened, is happening, it's going on around you. It could be a person that is going through a disappointment, a grief process, regrets. Uh, somebody could have some regrets about what they did, what they did, how they behaved. Um, but there is this like something, something's irretrievably broken and lost in your environment. So that ship has sailed. Uh, that is water under the bridge. I'm seeing the uh, different deck here that where there is just water under the bridge. Water is meant to flow. These cups, these emotions are meant to flow. So there could be some sort of loss of emotional like control um, at a time. And there are regrets about that. That is not... Um... So if somebody like did something that excluded you... I do feel like they ha or or was damaging to you in some way, maybe even over a long period of time. It does look like they regret some aspect of that, whether they've, you know, changed behavior or whatever. You know, it's very often people have regrets about the consequences of their actions without really like changing their behavior. They just regret that you found out or regret this. But there can be these there can be these changes and regret is often the foundation of really good change. So, you know, we don't want to feel unnecessary guilt or unnecessary regrets, but they are a foundation of change. So it is important. Maybe this is something you're looking back on the regret, like you know, regretting getting this tattoo for a good 10 hours. Well, I, it did change my whole thinking about what types of people get tattoos. It also helped me really think about how I made this decision, what went into it or what didn't go into it. And, um, and you know, and then was it a one-time thing? Did I make this decision one way? Or is this like a pattern in my life that I need to look at? So that regret was actually incredibly important um, to look at going forward and learn from. Uh, so we don't want unnecessary guilt and unnecessary regret, but it is really important to feel those regrets. Um, not cling to them, let them go, but it is important. So, um, so anyway, someone could be regretting something. I'm, you know, people do. It's part of growth. Uh, or there could just be a, just, there could be a loss in your environment. It could be slow moving, um, or maybe not as much a crisis as you think it is at first. 
but there is there is some sort of loss here that's um, maybe perhaps motivating you. Uh, it does have a strong effect, right? So this five of pentacles where you're like confused because what you thought was going to be there isn't there. Um, it, the party was moved and you showed up at the old location. Um, this is like, yeah, there, there, there really was loss. You really did come into this loss. Someone is grieving. Someone, someone is grieving. I didn't mean to say that, but that is, that's clearly a message coming through. Someone is grieving a loss, perhaps a death or something like that. Um, and they're not as expected. This person is not what you expected them to be, but, or is there another person here? Something's not as expected. I think there is another person here. Um, well, yeah, you're on a planet with a billion people. There's going to be other people involved in every reading, but, um, you're not necessarily a hermit, but maybe you are. So this five of cups, there are regrets. So losses. So there could be losses, actual losses in your environment, or there could be um, someone who has experienced a loss, um, perhaps even a death that they are processing and dealing with. And it's having an effect on you and what your, your experience has been. This could be something they're not talking about too, because the seven of swords is here underlying the whole thing. Or maybe you're not really talking about some losses that you've experienced. Uh, but there is, it's not, the Five of Cups isn't a card of all is lost, right? It sits under the Five of Pentacles. Fives are, are really rough energies. So um, it's sitting under this Five of Pentacles where there's been disappointment and sort of feeling excluded or feeling left out or things not being the way you'd hoped or expected or as life not being very lifey, life lively, life not being very lively here. And it's right over this five of cups because there has been loss. There have been losses. There's, there is, this, this tree was lost. This tree was cut down. It wasn't, you know, and, but I see in this five of cups that something can regrow. Like it's, it's going to be a nurse log. It's a stump and we're going to get a new shoot off of it. But there's some processing that has to happen. Four of pentacles here, um, being cautious, being careful. That's your to-do list. Uh, be cautious, be careful, not, no risk taking, which is really weird because we have this leap of faith, but not right now. Um, just be cautious, be prepared, um, be, hold on to what you have, which is so strange. Okay. You're birthing a new age. You do require a leap of faith, but the instructions here are to a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush stick with what you have, even if it's not the big, like, like if you're playing poker, you're going to hold, you're not going to fold. You're just going to hold. You're not going to, you know, put more in the pot. I, I don't really know poker very well, but you're not going to make, you're not going to increase the bet. You're not going to ask for another card. You're going to hold with what you have right now. So this could be all about a leap of faith you've taken in the past. And right now you're just holding or you're building energy to, to make another leap, but you're being caught. This is cautious, careful, prepared energy. This is focusing on the here and now focusing on what you have now. Oh, right. Cause we had all these characters that were looking at the past and this is being very present minded. Don't think about the big thing. Like, like, let's say you get cast in a play and you get a smaller part than what you were hoping. Okay, hold on to that smaller part. Keep the smaller part. Don't, don't be like, well, I'm out of here. I didn't get the lead. Like just be happy with the smaller part. Very, be very focused on it. Do a really good job with your part here, with what you have in your hand right now to play. Um, you know, you do a good job with that. Maybe other opportunities will open up. Maybe this is just a one-time thing. Like, I don't like, it's just, don't worry about the past. Don't worry about the future. Just focus here. Now, what do you have before you right now? Um, and being very focused on that that what you have before you that won't sustain you forever but it will sustain you for now and that's where your focus needs to be here now focusing on the tasks at hand um possible outcome in the future ace of swords so whatever's 
you know, Bruin, whatever's a secret may come out, um, may be spoken about, but this is, um, this can be epiphany energy. This is the, the bindweed blooming at night, a different vision, a new vision coming in here. There will be communication coming in. Just hold tight is basically what I'm seeing. Just hold tight. Some sort of new revelation, new beginning, um, new communica uh, communication. Something's coming in here. Uh, a new idea, a new, it's, it's a new cycle. A new start is coming. So I think this is just like, hold tight, stick with what you've got for now. Um, something new is coming in and maybe you're, maybe you're holding on to what you've got because you're going to need to, to take a leap of faith. Um, so I just want to say like, don't let the bastards grind you down is a little bit of the vibe here. Like there is a new, fresh idea, a new perspective, a new idea is coming. Um, so don't, don't, uh, get too, yeah, just stick with, stick with what you've got so that you're getting some sort of communication is coming in or something's coming in. That's, that's going to bring a lot of even more clarity to a situation. I want to say like, it feels like somebody else is communicating with you. There is this different perspective. There is a different way to do something. This almost feels like a new opportunity. I want to say like, I mean, it is the modern era. So expect an email, not a telegram. Um, that's what it feels like. And it's like growing in the dark. It's very, it, the, it's, I want to say it's a little bit unexpected because I'm having a lot of hope thinking about it. It's going to bring you some peace. It is unexpected. It is, it has been, um, yeah, it's, it's unexpected. Oh, maybe it's a phone call too, because you're hearing something. You could be hearing something. But the, the night aspect, the guardians of the night, this clarity that comes out of some sort of darkness where you didn't see before you will, and maybe you have a change in, in vision, a change in how you see something that makes it really clear. We already have a lot of clarity. So this almost seems like a whole new situation, but just stay put for now. <laughs> Okay. Cow spirit. The miracles are endless. That's what this feels like to me is like, you're, you're grinding, you're doing, um, the, there's, there's some difficulty here. It's not, um, and there's some disappointment with the truth. Uh, and then this, this ace of swords does feel somewhat miraculous. It's like, it's almost like you hear a different way or there's a different way of communicating and it brings in a lot of clarity. And there's something very like trophy like about it. It's like a, yeah. All right. So, uh, cow spirit, the miracles are endless. So keeping that, I think that that's a great mantra, especially given these like two fives out here, this nine of pentacles, this snoozing, snoozing on success, sleeping, <laughs> sleeping through success or sleeping your way to success. That sounds weird, but that's not how I meant that. Um, and then badger spirit, be fearless and bold. This is so funny because you're, ha you're being asked to be both cautious and fearless and bold. So maybe like in this caution, in this preparation, like it's just, there's some sort of juxtaposition. Oh, remember we were talking about the um, yin and yang. So there's this like spot of yang in all of this yin so there's a spot of bold and leaps of faith in some sort of like security safety stasis situation so it's like this piercing through some sort of 
solid situation. So being fearless and bold, badger, you know, don't badger anybody, but um, being persistent um, and fearless is really important, especially you go first, the universe, especially with something like this. Don't be afraid. All right, some really interesting energies here, but overall a pretty hopeful message. All right, be here now is what I would say. Um, even if it requires, even if you're afraid and even if you'd rather press snooze on a situation. So, all right, thanks for joining me. This was a long one. See you guys next time.